Yeah, that's a big boy thing. You wake up in the morning, you say, I put on my big boy pants. Look, I'm wearing a belt. I got big boy pants on. Stop. Hey! Okay, this is another one I've been seeing a lot of. The Sam guy, the Sam Onella. I'm seeing this name pop up a lot, and you know what? I just found out that I actually reacted to him in a meme. Wait, Sarah, I just want to serenade you. If you're gonna start making that fucking noise again, I swear to Christ. <laughs> From what you guys are telling me though, this is kind of like a history lesson, so I'm gonna be learning some things. I'm always down to learn some things in a humorous way. Historical misconceptions for you to bring up during family dinners. I think I want to do that one first. This episode of Salmonella Academy is brought to you by Salmonella Academy. Salmonella. Take hey, kid. Hi. Yeah, you. Oh. I just got off the phone with the big man upstairs. Oh god. And he told me that I need to clear a few things up around here. So without further ado, here's ten pieces of malarkey that you might still be spreading. Number one, nobody was ever burned to death at the Salem witch trials. Really? Of the accused, fifteen died in prison, nineteen were hanged, and one was squished to death. That last one is way more interesting than any cremation, by the way. Dude was a badass. His name was Giles Corey. He was eighty-one years old and so done with the town of Salem's garbage that he wouldn't even dignify the trial with a plea. So the town stuck in between two boards and stacked rocks on top of him oh. in an effort to draw out a confession. But every time they tried to get something out of him, all they would say was, more weight. This went on for three solid days badass. until he finally died, never giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch. One can only wonder. You gonna off me anyway? Why the hell would I say something? Respect. Now that whole witch is in, I, I, I didn't know. I always thought. So I just learned something new today. I got a lot of misconceptions, you know? I, I think a lot of things that might not be true. Like, I thought the earth was a stop. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Number two, the OG Buddha wasn't the obese guy. That's Budai, a Chinese folk character meant to represent Maitreya, aka future Buddha. Now this shirt is double sad. Number three, no. Buddha wasn't a god either. He was just a guy named Gautama. Now this shirt is triple sad. Number four, <laughs> ever heard of a vomitorium? Turns out, no, it's not a place where Roman nobles would go to make room for more pheasant spleen and lobster eyelids. It's just a big entranceway to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of. Number five, oh, Washington okay. never cut down a cherry tree in his youth. From what I heard, it kind of went through one ear and out the other with that. He cut down a cherry tree. Why was that a thing? Why was that so well known? Well, cutting down a tree is a big deal. Yeah, that's a big boy thing. You wake up in the morning, you say, I put on my big boy pants. Look, I'm wearing a belt. I got big boy pants on. Stop. Washington never cut down a cherry tree in his youth. I don't get this one at all. Apparently, it's supposed to paint the man in a good light somehow. It's like, Tyler, what the hell happened while we were gone? Where's the tree in the front yard? Oh, yeah, that was me. Got bored. Just felt like vandalizing <laughs> something, you know? Hey, what about my honest character? Number six, the pyramids weren't actually built by slaves. These workers were respected members of society. They ate meat and worked in three month shifts and even got I've to be that now. right next to the tomb after their death. Matter of fact, that's more than we can save for the people working on man's greatest achievements today. If I spent years of my life helping to build the space station, you're damn right I'd want the Salmonella Memorial Corpse Receptacle floating along right next to it. That would be amazing. Number seven, the Great Wall of China is not the only only man-made object visible from space. I don't know where you dipshits got this one from. First of all, there's no way you could see it with the unaided eye. The wall is like 30 meters thick at most, while the distance to outer space is generally I didn't know that was the thing. 100 kilometers up, known as the Karman line. To give some perspective, that's like me holding up a standard size guitar pick from across the entire length of I a can football see that. field and asking you what color it is. Also, <laughs> there are plenty of man-made objects that are way bigger in terms of local surface area than the Great Wall. So we even if it was visible, there's no way it would be the only one. Number eight, you might have heard this one before. You know, Hitler was a jerk and all, but hey, he made the Autobahn, so at least he was efficient. Didn't hear that. I always heard he was a bad guy. That's all I got from him. But 
How about the line of the day? You know, Hitler was a jerk and all, but hey, he made the Autobahn, so at oh. least he was efficient. Actually, Hitler didn't create the Autobahn. It was already there. He just helped expand it into newer territory. In a similar vein, Mussolini didn't make the trains run on time. With most of Italy's infrastructure repairs happening before his rise to power in 1922, and even then, they weren't nearly as punctual as he'd like you to believe. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to find something else to like about these fascists. Like Hitler's elegant way of speaking. <laughs> Or the way Mussolini says spaghetti. Paschetti! Number 9. Iron Maidens weren't actual torture devices used in medieval times. Basically what happened is, some archaeologists in the 1800s saw an old metal coffin and some spikes, and said, yo, wouldn't it be wildin' if we put these things up in here, so that way if someone goes in it, they get poked in their bits? Why? You are a sick man, Cornelius. <laughs> I like it. Into the museum it goes. At least Iron Maiden was real. They were as real as it gets. Still are. And don't you forget it. Number 10. Einstein never failed math. He had mastered both integral and differential calculus by the age of 15. So why was that chance, lie this being one was told? was just made up to make glue eaters feel better about themselves. Oh. Well, congratulations, Dimitri. Looks like you failed pre-algebra for the third time. Brady he still can't graduate. Well, hey, that means I'm still on par with famous smart science man, so, uh, yeah. Worship me. So it just goes to share that we've all got a lot to learn about the world around us. That's why you need to go to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in technology, design, business, I and heard more. About Premium this. membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. They've got great courses in graphic design and animation, which I've clearly already mastered. I mean, check this out. <laughs> but I'm sure you could get a lot of use out of them. You can also learn plenty of more recreational skills, like how to solve a Rubik's Cube or how to play chess really well. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my viewers, where you can get two months of Skillshare completely free. To sign up, go to skl.sh slash samo. It feels like telephone. That game you used to play in class, I don't know if they played it anymore in school. You know, I am pretty old. But the game where you used to start all the way at the end, somebody will say something, and by the time it gets all the way down there, it's totally different from where it started from. Apparently, we thought one thing, but uh, what really happened was that. I'm trying to create my own history. I'm trying to create my thing. But of course, you need to know the history so history won't be repeated. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Hell if I know anymore. All right, what is this wild world of Inuit folklore? I'm probably saying that wrong, but he's going to probably correct me. Inuit? Hey kids, from clubbing seals to inventing new compound nouns for snow, oh. nobody knows how to kick it quite like the Inuit. Of course, if Inuit. you're a close-minded tree dweller like me, you might initially think that they can't be that good at storytelling, given that they only know about like six things. But that's not true. They've actually got an incredibly complex and fascinating oral tradition. You could ask one about it. There's plenty of these guys around today, but they've got Jesus and microwaves and shit, and that's boring. We want to talk about the stuff from before missionaries came and sent their miserable way of life to a farm upstate. So instead, let a 20-year-old college kid who's never lived outside of Delaware tell you all about all it. Right, Obvious I'm disclaimer, listening. Inuits are super diverse. Calling a caribou Inuit a copper Inuit is like calling a copper caribou a caribou caribou. Sure, they both look the same from far away, but when a thunderstorm hits, you better know which one to hide under. As such, while most of the following can be applied in broad terms to most Inuits, the little details come from a variety of subcultures that don't necessarily represent the whole. Got it? Swing. Just because we look alike don't mean we are alike. I don't even think we look alike. Uh, you know, there's similarities there as we have, but that whole y'all all look alike, y'all, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I think we all got a different thing. We all got different types of features. Everybody's different, right? Everybody's physically different. Unless you're a twin. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going off. Sorry. A variety of subcultures that don't necessarily represent the whole got it swank. Now, a lot of the world's faiths are centered around bringing people together and inspiring them with stories and images of the divine so as to give them a wider sense of purpose here on Earth. That's all well and good, but that whole search for greater meaning thing only really comes into play once your original purpose of making sure you don't die is pretty much figured out. Not so for the Inuit. You see, it ain't so easy living in a place where plants can't grow and being naked for an hour means certain death. 
As such, their beliefs were a little more practical, being more so geared towards fostering the paranoid levels of fear required to survive in such a hostile environment. For example, the Inuit believed that everyone has a sort of life force or soul, what they called anirnik, and like plenty of religions, they believed it lived on after death and could meddle in the world of mortals. But while most cultures regard animals as being spiritually inferior meat puppets, to the Inuits, a creature's soul is just as powerful and vengeful as that of a person. And like I said, up there in the Arctic, not much greenery in the scenery. So they basically had no choice but to devour nothing but souls every single day. And wouldn't you know it, souls don't much care for getting ate. So the Inuit made sure to follow a complex set of guidelines on how to play oh, animals. Okay, in the sorry. afterlife. Animals. Lest the pissed off ghost of that arctic turn whispers sweet nothings into a polar bear's ears and turns your whole village into a big Japanese flag by sunrise. Here's a few. If you kill something, make sure you eat it all. Just as an American who doesn't clean his plate doesn't get dessert, an Inuit who doesn't eat all his walrus doesn't get any more walrus. Ever. Oh. Till they starve. If you kill a polar bear, make sure to point its head towards the direction it came from so it can find its way home more easily. If you pull really? a seal out of the water, give him some fresh water so he's not thirsty when you bash his brain in. Also, its spirit lives in its bladder, so make sure to hold on to it until the yearly bladder festival, where everyone gets together, blows up their bladders like balloons, and throws them out to sea so they can reincarnate into new Are seals. You for real? These taboos aren't all just about hunting, though. For some reason, there's a load of them about pregnancy. They make fun of people's facial features or else the baby will have the same- I'm sorry, cut him off, but yes, I've heard that in my- my timeline of life. Really? Did you hear that? That's another one I hate. Heard that. What do they call them? Superstitious? Huh. You break a mirror? Seven years. <laughs> Don't split a pole? Bad luck. Don't talk about somebody or your baby gonna come out looking exactly like that person? Get that nasty shit out of my face! Bad luck! I even heard you can get pregnant by a toilet seat. So you don't sit on the toilet seat. Watermelon seed. Don't eat the watermelon seed or you're gonna get pregnant. <laughs> Not pregnant, excuse me. You're going to get a watermelon grown in your belly and you're going to look pregnant. Oh, just about hunting, though. For some reason, there's a load of them about pregnancy. Don't make fun of people's facial features or else the baby will have the same features. Don't walk backwards or else the baby will come out backwards. Excuse me? What do you mean by come out backwards? Oh, feet first. All right. Sorry. Feet first. Bad. Not good. Your baby come... Yeah, got it. So pregnant women can't back up? Okay. We all looking for guides. We're looking for the guide of life. What is the book that tells us how to live this thing because I'm telling you, it, it doesn't make any sense sometimes. It just guide me to the direction I need to do to finish this life of mine. Face your bed towards a doorway or it'll come out sideways, also dangerous. Don't wrap rope around your hand or it'll come out with the umbilical cord around its neck, extremely dangerous. Don't drink directly from a soup bowl or it'll come out with dark skin, not touching that one. <laughs> Come out with dark skin, not touching that one. Don't put a bowl on your head or else it'll be wearing the placenta like a hat, too hilarious, and the list goes on. Central to the consequences of breaking a lot of these rules is the being known as Sedna. The story behind Sedna varies pretty wildly between different groups of Inuits, but here's the gist of it. She was once a young girl who pissed everyone off, either by being annoying or eating too much food or rejecting an arranged marriage or marrying a dog for some reason. So her father throws her out of a kayak and when she tries to get back in, he chops off all her fingers. The sea goddess sees this, furrows her long floppy seaweed brow, does a sassy snap, and the girl turns into an immortal sea witch, while her disembodied fingers turn into the first seals. And to this day, Sedna sits at the bottom of the ocean, growing new fingers which promptly fall off and turn into all the world's seal lions and gnar walruses. That is until someone goofs up in some small arbitrary fashion like, yo Sedna, bad news, I, uh, I just caught a guy chewing a piece of blubber. What's wrong with that? Well, he wasn't looking north while he did it. Are you fucking kidding me? In his defense, he was standing right on the pole, so he literally couldn't look anywhere but south. He could have moved! That's it! No more fingy foods for three moons! Another fun creation myth is how the moon and sun came to be. So long ago, there were these two siblings named Molina and Aningan. The two got along just fine as kids, but as the two got older, they were put into their respective genders' living areas and saw each other less and less. Then one day, Aningan got the feeling that his lower nose was in dire need of some Eskimo kisses. So that night, he snuck into the women's lodge 
colleges, saw his sister, thought, hmm, I pick that one, and proceeded to do, you know, unspeakable things, technically becoming his own Eskimo brother. But it was too dark at the time for Melina to tell what happened. The next night, Ningen's like, I'll fucking do it again. Okay. Only this time, Melina smears soot all over his face. So later, she goes over to the men's lodges, and who has crap all over his face but her brother? This makes her so mad that she cuts off her own breasts with a knife, puts them in a bowl, throws them at an Ingen and says, if you enjoy me so much, then here, eat them. Go ahead, eat my disembodied quivering titties. She runs off into the night with a torch and an Ingen is really remorseful or horny or something. So he chases after her with his own torch and they end up running so fast that they took off like a plane into the sky and Molina became the sun while an Ingen became the moon. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Elder. If the sun and moon didn't exist yet, how did he do that stuff at night when there was no night? Now, some details of the story are tied into real-world phenomena. Some say that an Ingen tripped and messed up his torch, which is why the moon is so dim. And the moon cycles are because he gets really skinny from chasing after her for so long. And the new moon is when he goes away for a few days to hunt seals so he can fatten back up. But here's the kicker. Nobody ever explains what the whole lopping off her tits part was supposed to represent. That's entirely She's just creative liberty. Just like, ah yes, that's why the sun doesn't have tits. Probably for the best it doesn't, otherwise half the population will be blind by now. And worse, it's the half that makes up 85% of my viewer base. So you know what? Thanks for slicing and dicing them tea towels, Melina. I kind of owe you my career. But as for you, your eyes are valuable. You should treat them to something more substantial and informative. Like, say, a library of high-quality exclusive documentaries. Sponsor time. Curiosity Stream was founded by the dude behind the Discovery Channel, and it's great for someone like me who horks down any useless knowledge he sees, like the brave gators keeping America's sewers free of rats. And with thousands of titles, a lot of which are Curiosity Ooh. Stream exclusives, it's hard not to find something that interests you. Here's a gem I watched recently. The Kingdom, How Fungi Made Our World. Mushrooms are honestly like if you told aliens about Earth and they tried their best to recreate what they thought plants were. Real wild stuff. You can try Curiosity Stream for absolutely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella. Also, signing up for a year of Curiosity Stream will now give you Nebula for free. What's Nebula? Glad I asked. A bunch of independent creators that I may or may not associate with in some way decided to start their own streaming service, completely free of ads and full of content that can't be seen anywhere else. I hardly make content for my own channel, so God knows I couldn't muster up any Nebula exclusives, but here's some guys who have. If you like them, go check it out. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and Sam Manella. <laughs> now, those are some interesting stories. I mean, the breast part, cutting them off, just, you just wanted to, I feel, I feel like you just wanted to throw that in there. It's bad enough that he was doing the do with his sister not even knowing he was doing the do, but then went in there like you just for, yeah, you just picking anybody to go up in it with uh, whatever. Come to find out it's your sister and they're doing the do and boo boo's falling off and now it's the moon and star. I, I y'all I, I ain't yeah. It's like how he say he ain't gonna touch certain things. I, I ain't gonna touch that. I'm done. Thank you guys for the suggestion. I like. I'm learning some stuff. I appreciate it. But there we go, Blaze Squad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you blaze the like button. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.